just just speaking truths here, pretty weak field for this week's Rocket <laughs> Mortgage Classic. That's why Bryson is the heavy favorite. We're not going to lie to you here. He's also the heavy favorite, Amanda, because he won here last season. Not a single top five player in the world is in this field. Bryson and Patrick Reed, the only top ten players in the field this week. Bryson, look at those odds, plus 750. You don't often see somebody that's that big of a favorite. Patrick Reed is 14 to 1. We do have Masters winner Hideki Matsuyama in the field at 16 to 1. We also have Bubba Watson, who blew a late lead on Sunday at the Travelers at 40 to 1. Let's bring in Sportsline's Mike McClure to sift through this for us and find some value. Mike, you're not going to find it with the uh, defending champion Bryson DeChambeau. What's your outlook for him this week? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that he's the favorite, obviously, coming in defending champion. Finally gets to a golf course where the distance off the tee is really going to help him and matter. Uh, so it makes a ton of sense. Definitely, you mentioned it. There's no value at this price at plus 750. This number should still be down around plus 1100, in my opinion, at absolute best. Uh, so definitely inflated there. Don't think you can really bet him too much. If you want to, maybe look for a live in-play bet where he might fall you know, to the spot where he's getting a little closer to that plus 1100, plus 1300 range. But that's really the only way I think that you can attack Bryson at this event. Okay, so give us a, a pick to win it here in the uh, Rocket Mortgage Challenge, which Bryson won last season. Let's drop right down to Patrick Reed. I think that Reed is someone that really benefits from Bryson being in the field, right? So Bryson, obviously the massive favorite here. You mentioned a much weaker field. No one really else in the top five in the world in terms of the golf rankings here. So I like Patrick Reed plus 1400. You look at this event in the past. One thing you're going to notice right away is it is going to be a scoring birdie fest here. You're looking at like minus 20, minus 23. That means you're going to need someone who has an an excellent short game that's exactly what Patrick Reed does not particularly long off the tee but he's good enough to put himself in position to let that short game shine and that's what I think we see this week I like Reed at 1400 won the farmers back in January top 25s in five of his last six events uh, you can find some good value on a lot of people let's go down and give us a, a sleeper for this week Mike Time to head back to Gary Woodland. Uh, you're going to hear this a lot from me today, but there are a few golfers in this field that are really going to benefit from the strength of the field being significantly weaker. Gary Woodland is one of those players. I also mentioned that it's finally an event where being long off the tee is actually going to be a big benefit again. And that's what Gary Woodland is. He is long off the tee, also very accurate. The only question we ever have with Gary Woodland is what is going to happen with the flat stick. I like him though this week. I think that at plus at 40 to one, I think that this number is way too long. I love him down around plus 2,500 is where I think he should be. I think he contends for a top 10, but would not be surprised at all if Bryson struggles, Reed struggles a bit, if Woodland can go in and close this one out. Woodland's last win came at the U.S. Open a couple of years ago. Hurt his hip, but he, he's on the mend. He had a swing tweak. His body's feeling better. Maybe this is the week that everything comes together for him. All right, looking at DFS, give us some cheap good buys. I'm going to start with Doc Redman. He's someone that uh, I've had a lot of interest in. He's, the price point is starting to creep up just a little bit, but at 7,900 in this field, this is an appropriate number here. I like him. Top 50 in the strokes again on the approach. He's played very well here in the previous two appearances. Uh, T2, I believe. He's also made five consecutive cuts, including the uh, two top 10 finishes at the Byron Nelson and the Palmetto. And then Doug Gim. He really is someone that doesn't fit the course extremely well, other than the fact that he's excellent tee to green. And at this price point, I want someone who's really good tee to green. Hope he can get hot with the putter for a round or two. But I definitely think he's someone that can contend for a top 20 finish, which is what you're looking for at a $7,000 price point in DFS. And uh, with this uh, weaker than average field, you're going to have some players that are going to cost a lot of money. So who are some bad buys that are just too expensive? For me, it's going to come in at Webb Simpson. Uh, at this price point here, I don't think that he deserves to be the third most expensive golfer in the field, even though it is a little bit watered down. The other concern I have here is he really hasn't played a whole lot of golf. You go look at like a game log for him, right? You're seeing he's basically playing one event per month over the last three to four months. Uh, I just don't like this for him. He's not long enough off the tee. The only thing he's really got going for him is he's going to putt well and he's going to be able to pick up the birdies if he is dialed in. 
I just question whether or not he's dialed in at this point. And then Kevin Kistner, 8,500 is just simply too much for him. I would be way more interested at 7,500. Uh, you know, doesn't really fit it. He's a lot like Webb Simpson, right? He's going to do well with the putter. He's had some success here in the past, and that's the reason for the inflated price point. But I, I just don't see any reason to go there at 8,500. And golfers to target. You mentioned you like Gary Woodland as your sleeper. You also like him here, but also the Masters winner from this year, Hideki Matsuyama. Why is that? Yeah, Hideki Matsuyama is someone that really is going to benefit from the weaker than normal field like Gary Woodland. All of a sudden, you've got a guy that's normally going to be 10 to 15th in a loaded field. Now he's going to be top two or three in terms of the simulation win percentages here. He is excellent on the approach, excellent off the tee. Once again, the question is always going to be the putter, but he is going to be in position to rack up the birdies here. Love the win equity that he gains. Uh, he's really just got to fade Bryson having a, a big terror here. So I like him at this price point at 10400 I think he's the first player in my DFS lineups this week. All right, that's good for DFS. One more pick from Mike McClure here for the Rocket Mortgage this week. It's a top 10 lock, and Mike, it's a player who's only missed one cut all season. Yeah, Joaquin Neiman is someone, if you followed myself or even our guy Rick, you know that Joaquin Neiman is someone that really pops well in the models that we use. There's a lot of reason for that. Once again, someone who's going to benefit from a weaker than normal field. Love the way he sets up. He's like Woodland. He's long enough off the tee, too. He should be a top 10 lock here in this uh, plus 200. I think that the win equity, the actual win is tough to bet him there at the current number in the market because of Hideki, because of Bryson, because of Patrick Reed. But I think he's a lock for a top 10 at this spot. I just love the way his game sets up. I love this course, love this field. for No him. mention of uh, Bubba Watson. I'm guessing you're a little bit scared of him after what we saw uh, his swing just totally unraveling late at the Travelers Championship. Yeah, that's typically not something you like to see. And then getting right back out there the next week, uh, you know, it's one that all the increased attention is going to be on him. The price point's still inflated just a little bit because of how well he played. It would have been one thing if he had won the event and it, like we have something that we can go on and build from. But that is not what I like to see on a Sunday when you're in contention for a win. All right, Mike McClure, DFS millionaire from Sportsline, joining us here on CBS Sports HQ, recapping Mike's picks for the Rocket Mortgage Classic. He likes Patrick Reed to win it. He is the second favorite, but 14 to one because Bryson is such a heavy favorite at plus 750. His sleeper is Gary Woodland because this is a course that's gonna benefit the long hitters and Gary Woodland is a long hitter and loves Joaquin Neiman as a top 10 lock at plus 200. You can see and hear Mike on the Early Edge podcast pretty much every day. The podcast is available every morning by 11 a.m. Eastern time. It's your daily winning picks from Sportsline in under 10 minutes, hosted by Jonathan Coachman. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.